now everything seems better when you're around. When you're around, love's always there. When you're around, there is no question in my mind. Uh-uh. When you're around, you have a way to make me say, I know you understand me so. There's no other one for me. I could never let you go. No, 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 you mean so much to me, you see. There is no question in my mind. Uh-uh. I touch your face and pull you tenderly so close to whisper what I feel. And you know it is love I feel It's love I feel What love is really all about is you Nobody else but you I could never let you go No, 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 no You mean so much to me, you see There is no question in my mind Uh-uh I touch your face and pull you tenderly So close To whisper what I feel it is love I feel It's love I feel What love is really all about is you And you know it is love I feel it's love, I feel what love is really all about is you, nobody else but you, nobody else but you, nobody else but you, when you're around. So that last song, When You're Around, does entail the closeness of people together. And this story that I want to tell you has a little different type of closeness. In Washington, D.C., there was a theatrical group called the Hexagon Club. This has been in existence for about 50 years. And it's a musical, political, humorous satire that is given once a year in the Duke Ellington School of Music to a sold out audience. And a lot of the celebrities in Washington from TV, the newspaper, radio, etc., are the ones who do the hosting. Well, this, I was involved in this uh, production two years in a row. And in the first year, the name of the show was Mayor for, for Life. And what this had to do with, in Washington, there was a venerable but irascible mayor, Marion Barry, who you've probably heard of. He was very charismatic and very well liked, really by the entire community, but would often get himself into a lot of different predicaments. Well, the show that we did, that time was called Mayor for Life and the major tune, uh, the major the major song uh, was called Mayor for Life. The first night when we were on stage, 
I was standing next to the lead singer, who was a wonderful black gospel church singer, and he was short, um, and he had this terrific baritone voice. And he started singing the song, and it gets about halfway through, and then all of a sudden I see him give a jerking movement of his shoulder. And it happened just for a split second, and it went back, and he continued singing and fin finished the number. Off stage, I pulled him aside and I said, um, let me ask you a question. Have you ever dislocated your shoulder? He said, yes, I have. I said, is that what happened on stage? It was just a little subluxation? And he said, yes. I said, have you ever dislocated both shoulders? And he replied in the affirmative, yes. I said, well, in that case, have you ever had a seizure, a convulsion, or epileptic fit? And he said, yes, I have. I said, so, um, do you happen to have an arteriovenous malformation of your brain? And he said, darn it, I knew when they had a neurosurgeon here that somebody would ask me that question. Well, he did have an inoperable, huge arteriovenous malformation of the left side of his brain that was controlled not with surgery because it was certainly inoperable, but with various medications. And even with medications, occasionally there's a breakthrough so you can have the signs from that particular uh, problem. I think it should be mentioned also that this show, uh, as, as mentioned, always played to a full house for the entire month of March and all the proceeds went to a local charity. The years that I did it, they went to Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind to the tune of something like $140,000. So it really was a very worthwhile, worthwhile endeavor for everybody involved. Uh, since again, uh, all of the actors, the singers, the playwrights, the, the stagehands, everybody was some kind of a professional, but all had some kind of a musical uh, or theatrical interest. Another follow-up of a story about an arteriovenous malformation <clears throat> concerns a 20-year-old uh, uh, medical student in Montpellier who was uh, a brilliant student and all of a sudden he came into the hospital in a coma from a major bleed in his brain. In those days, I said, we didn't have an MRI or a CAT scan, but we did do an angiogram which showed this huge arteriovenous malformation. We went ahead and operated on him. I did it with a professor, Boris Vlaovic, uh, who was a wonderful neurosurgeon from Yugoslavia. Uh, we opened up uh, the scalp and then the skull cap and got down to the arteriovenous malformation. And we proceeded then to remove it slowly but surely using bipolar microcoagulation forceps and micro scissors. Um, and, uh, and took out the clot also, the blood clot. However, this took a lot of uh, eclipse and coagulation to do this, and we finally removed the entire problem. On closing, it was the first time that I was, I was allowed to do the closure by myself. In other words, put back the skull cap and close the scalp. As I closed the scalp very carefully, um, uh, one of the nurses happened to say to me, quel joli petit point, in other words, with pretty little sutures. So, a faux faire and a rosage. In French, the word arrosage means to water the plants. It's like a toast whenever you do something good. So, after the surgery, they did take me into uh, one of the back rooms and we had a glass of wine to my pretty little baseball-like sutures, stitches. Anyway, um, he had a very difficult recovery, but that was a pretty impressive story for, uh, for taking out one of these arteriovenous malformations.